Hi everyone. Um, okay, I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about what I've been referring to in my past couple of videos as the birth canal of Venus retrograde. And I was going to move this camera in a different place, but I'm going to let it be. I'm probably a little bit off to the side. It doesn't matter. I'm going carrying on um, about Venus retrograde and Mercury retrograde. Venus is retrograde right now. She went retrograde on December the 19th. She goes direct February 28th, uh, January 28th, I believe. Then Mercury goes retrograde January the 14th and direct again February the 4th. I'll go through all those dates again. That was really fast. I've been referring to these retrogrades as a birth canal and as a reminder to everybody where this fits in the narrative is as follows. On November the 19th, we have the first of the new set of eclipses that is going to be with us till the end of 2023 on the Taurus-Scorpio axis. Specifically on November the 19th, we had a lunar eclipse in Taurus. September the 19th, the week before week after, November the 19th, the time period in between as it accelerated towards November the 19th, brought in an, or opened up or announced or made the new portal or the new set of energies that we're going to be moving into or towards felt, made their presence felt. However, it's very likely that the promise did not deliver because right after the November 19th eclipse, we went into the December 4th solar eclipse in Sagittarius, the last of the old set of eclipses on the Gemini Sagittarius axis. December the 3rd, 4th, February the 3rd, 4th of 2022, the week before, week after. And indeed, a certain amount of this old energy we're going to continue to re release and resolve with decreasing intensity after February the 4th till we get to May, till we get to the next set of eclipses in, in, in April, May. Um, so we are... A new set of eclipses and energies being announced. And those of you who've been listening to my videos, I've been harping on and on and on about the second half of 2021, which is almost over, being about moving towards a new set of energies and the old set of energies wanting to be wrapped up and the old set of energies having a sense of boundaries and definition and clarification and putting things, dotting the I's and crossing the T's and putting things to bed, wrapping them up or letting them go and the new set of energies needing to be embraced, but the new set of energies can't be completely embraced with a sense of clearance, appropriate energetic clearance until the old is released, and here we are. New set of energies, September 19th to November 19th, old set of energies, December 4th to February 4th, and then on December the 18th, we had a full moon in Gemini, which was a normal full moon, except that it was important and I am telling you, it is December 26th as I look back to the 18th of December and the few days around that. Themes of completion and eclipsy stuff, people, situations being eclipsed in and out of our lives. Absolutely. And the reason why that full moon, the December 18th full moon, is important is because the prior to December 4th, the last solar eclipse that we were operating under in June was in Gemini. And so you look for, for that eclipse, a closing corresponding full moon, right? Okay. So in June, we had a new moon solar eclipse in Gemini. In the middle of a normal eclipse cycle, you would have a lunar eclipse in Gemini about six months after the solar eclipse. Well, the lunar eclipse happened in Taurus on November the 19th because the eclipses are changing signs. So a month after that was a normal full moon in Gemini on December the 18th but it was closing out that period energetically, to some extent at least, to a large extent, of what had started up around June the 10th, I believe, from what I recall. But if I will, if you really want me to hold me, I'm extemporizing right now to that date, you're welcome to do the research and confirm when the June solar eclipse in Gemini was. I think it was June the 10th, irrespective. New set of energies, November 19th. Old set of energies, December 4th. Old set of energies, December 18th. Venus, retrograde, December the 19th. Jupiter switching signs into Pisces, from Aquarius to Pisces, January the 28th. Mercury going retrograde, January the 14th. Venus going direct, January the 28th. Mercury going direct, February the 4th. Voila. When I talk about the new set of energies with the Taurus, 
lunar eclipse on November the 19th promising but not delivering, it is because we are being asked to, at this time, continue to process what we need to process, release, let go, work over. Old set of energies that started to operate again and were triggered by the December 4th eclipse and by the December 18th full moon, it has to be said. And Venus going retrograde and Mercury going retrograde, the planet Pluto, the planet of death and transformation, that's the that's the astrological buzzword, and I'll expand on that in a second to clarify it, plays a very, very, very important role with these retrogrades. And I really, I'm telling you, these retrogrades, whatever was promised with the November 19th eclipse, you will not be able to embrace it, and you will not be able, it will not make its presence felt till at least the middle of February, if not March. It's really going to be the beginning of March when you're just going to be able to dust yourself off and go, aha, the new is here. Okay, not every eclipse hits in an eclipse cycle hits everyone with the same intensity every time. So if you're not hit with that intensity November 19th, don't worry. There are eclipses coming up over the next two years in the Taurus Scorpio cycle that will be happy to hit you. But for those people who feel like they've been hit by an eclipse, which feels a little bit like a lightning bolt, well, here it is. And as I've often mentioned in my videos, the 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 veil between this world and the next becomes really thin with these eclipse lunations in terms of transitions and souls transitioning and people transitioning. Okay, all of that said, Venus retrograde, as I've hinted at and mentioned before, for me more than anything, I know there's a lot of talk about Venus being the planet of love and the planet of beauty. For me, Venus is the planet of flow and day-to-day -day luck. I think we feel Venus's lucky influence more on a day-to-day -day basis than we feel Jupiter's. It's a faster moving transit through a part of the chart and it, it's, its gifts, her gifts are more straightforward and less knowing and less complicated and less spiritual often than Jupiter's, which is the lucky planet. But Jupiter has a tendency to give you lucky breaks through <laughs> laying you off or getting you to leave a home or, you know, Jupiter's lucky breaks are much more momentous and at the time don't necessarily feel all that lucky until you look back at them and go, oh, thank you, Jupiter. Why is Jupiter? Venus is much more, here's 10 bucks, you know, you know, here's, 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 here's information about a job opportunity. Here's, let me help flow this along. Well, when Venus is retrograde, some of that flow is missing. Venus is taking a bit of a break and is going over certain things. More than that, Venus for me is a planet more directly of money and relationships. Yes, she governs the arts. Yes, luxuries. And yes, with Venus retrograde, highly advisable and recommended that you do not make drastic changes to your appearance. You do not have that plastic surgery. You do not try something, you know, because when Venus goes direct on January and by the time you hit February, you might look at yourself in the mirror and regret it all. You might regret it all before. So... Hold off for a few weeks, folks, before before you reach for the bleach. Um, it's always fun when you crack yourself up. Um, so, financial tightness, managing expenditures, financial flow occurring into November in a certain way, and then all of a sudden it being up in the air. It could be up in the air because you feel like you may be switching jobs. It may be up in the air because you know that there's change of foot. It could be up in the air because you are between jobs and waiting for a paycheck. It could be up in the air because there are expenses. It could be up in the air because enough cash is not coming in. And Venus's question through this process is, what do you value? Ultimately with Venus, what we come back to, if there's one word we come to, it is a value. What do you value? And yes, there's things that we value materially. There's things that we value in terms of money and luxuries and 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 tangible, tangible signs of abundance. But all of it, Venus asks to be aligned to what we value and what is of value to us. What are our goals? What are our dreams? Where are we going? How heavy is the backpack on our back? 
Is the shell on our back aligned in the right way? Is it too big? Do you have too many expenditures? When Venus shuts off the tap, it's a way of saying, are you managing your resources? Are your resources managing you? Are your expenses at such a point that you feel like you have to work this job and work this job and work this job in order to meet your expenses? Or do you have your priorities right? So that wherever you're spending your money or however you're managing your money is aligned towards your goals. Alignment, correcting misalignment. Folks, this is what I mean by the birth canal, correcting misalignment. There are new energies that are going to make their presence felt by February and March, for which you have already had hints between September and November, and particularly in November. This is the time to either deal with things that may be outside your control that require closure and letting go of things, to be in a clearer space by February and March, and it is a time to correct misalignment. Where are you going? Where are these new energies? Where does Taurus sit in your chart? What house does it occupy? What does that house stand for? I'm only doing that because people who watch my videos all the time, I keep using that phrase. Where does a sign sit in your chart? What house is that? What does that house stand for? It will give you clues as to where Taurus is. That's where the eclipse happened on November the 19th. That is where there are a new set of energies kind of beckoning you forward, which have promised, not yet delivered. Delivery will likely not be clean and clear and present till February and March. And until then, and especially now, with planets being in retrograde, take a step back, be a little introspective, be reflective, think about where there's misalignment, where there's expenditure. And also, relationships will come back from the past. Venus, planet of relationships, flow, harmony, handshakes, togetherness. Venus doesn't like conflict, sometimes to a fault. Reevaluating relationships, what is important to you. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Old relationship issues, here to be reevaluated, realigned so that by the time you get to February, March, you can move forward and get going. Now, Venus, let me see, is there anything? Managing expenditure. I took some notes, actually, because when I was thinking, things were... <sighs> what does it mean when we talk about value? Also reflect on scarcity. Now, that is a big statement. But also reflect on the scarcity of love in your life and where you feel that occurs and where you feel that has manifested over time. Venus is retrograde. That phrase, expenditure, value, sometimes things are valuable because we perceive them to be scarce. Sometimes we create a scarcity based on improper prioritization and misalignment. And then with Venus retrograde, this phrase, and I'm not going to expand on it, I'm going to just leave it here like a smelly something right on your plates. <sighs> the scarcity of love. I would reflect on that. Where does that show up in your life? And based on how you value things, What does that phrase mean to you when it comes to trying to bring things into alignment? When it comes to financial issues, sure, past financial issues, but also relationship issues and past relationship issues while Venus is retrograde. Okay. Um, when these planets are retrograde and we're in this birth canal and we're going somewhere, important with Venus retrograde especially and with Mercury retrograde to lean into truth-telling about and not being in denial about what is needed. If you're headed in a certain direction and you're spending money, for example, on things that, and thinking that the money will be there by the time you get there to do, no, align things now. It is a time of transition. Do not be in denial about what it is that you will need to climb that next mountain, to go through that next portal. If something health related has come up and you have been spending money a certain way till November, do not assume that the same priorities and the same habits will support you moving forward. Venus going retrograde is a wake up call. 
and is meant to be helpful. It is a necessary transit saying, you are headed in this direction. I have already given you a sense of where it is that you're headed. Are you aligned with your resources and with everything? Or are you still operating under an old paradigm, thinking that the flow can continue in those directions? We are not in the second half of 2021 anymore. We're going to be in 2022 firmly. And the January 2nd new moon is actually a really helpful new moon to continue to push us there. Enjoy these next few days as best you can because it's going to get busy. And then by the time you get to, there's going to be a lot to consider. And when Mercury goes retrograde, a lot to hit your head over and a lot to reprocess and rethink and review, it, you know, from the middle of January to February. And then by February, March, it's going to be like, all right, and you're going to look back at this time and you'll realize that this is when you needed to be packing your bags and evaluating and aligning with what needs to be in the bags when you go on this journey, this new Taurian journey. So do not assume that the same habits will support you. The universe has. Do not be in denial over this. They will. This new thing will not go away. The eclipses and the energy so far, the universe has given you strong signs and signals about what is going to be your reality moving forward. Do not be in denial about this. Reality check. Heading somewhere, moving forward. What do I have with me? What are my resources? How am I packing my bags, metaphorically speaking? Oh, God, so much to say. Now, Venus entered Capricorn, where she's retrograde on November 5th. So... Some of this Venus evaluation, fly in the ointment, change where money is coming from, relationships needing review, where the pressure is, feeling like things may need to end or change since November. Venus conjuncted Pluto, change in Capricorn. Death and transformation with Pluto, I don't often get the sense that it is our mortality. It is, with Pluto, I've said this before, the further away the planet is from Earth, the more you can't, re the more you just have to work with its energy, the more you have no control over it, the more you are not, the more these are fated changes. And sometimes with Pluto, don't, I mean, you know, sometimes Pluto may well know what needs to change. So where does Capricorn sit in your chart? What needs to be transformed there? Pluto has been trying to transform it for a while. Work with Pluto's energy as best you can. Venus conjuncts Pluto December 11th. December 25th, a couple of days ago. And then once again, March the 3rd. I mean, this narrative is just, it's a story. Venus enters Capricorn November 5th. December 11th, Venus conjuncts Pluto. December 19th, Venus goes retrograde. December 25th, Venus conjuncts Pluto again. December 29th, Mercury, which is in Capricorn, conjuncts Venus. Planet of talking, thinking, speaking, conjuncting the planet of relationships and money going retrograde. December 30th, Mercury conjuncts Pluto. January the 8th, the Sun and retrograde Venus conjuncts. January the 14th, Mercury retrogrades in Aquarius. January the 23rd, a retrograde Mercury and the Sun conjunct. January 26th, Mercury comes back into Capricorn from Aquarius. January the 30th, Mercury, a retrograde Mercury, conjuncts Pluto. January 29th, Venus goes direct. February the 4th, Mercury goes direct. February the 11th, Mercury conjuncts Pluto direct again. February 16th, Venus and Mars, now in Capricorn, meet up. And then, stunningly, March the 3rd, Venus and Mars conjunct Pluto. March the 6th, Venus and Mars together move into Aquarius. Now, who? I mean, I looked at it, I was just like, all right, you know, planets? You got, you're, you're cooking something and what you're cooking is not going to be March, February, the energy start to clear March align and Pluto and Capricorn, these retrograde planets, and they don't just cross over Pluto. They cross over Pluto and retrograde and cross over Pluto. Mercury goes straight, retrogrades, crosses over Pluto and then goes direct. Those Pluto conjunctions are meaningful. It doesn't have to be, and it is not necessarily, a huge transition in and of itself. These are transitions that are supporting 
the larger story of Pluto trining the North Node in Taurus. Whatever changes are happening with the Venus and Mercury retrograde are the birth canal that are trying to support the new set of energies coming in. And I don't think, Your Honor, that I need to make my case any more strongly than that. The Pluto North Node trine is very, very important as we head through into January's lunations. And whatever our relation, some element of what is playing out may have issues of control with Pluto, who is trying to control what, who is trying to control who, you know, God of the underworld. And with Pluto, the transformation, you just have to lean into it. You know, th this is very much that planet, an astrologer I read talked about, Pluto being the planet that burns down the barn so that you can see the moon. There is nothing you can do. But it, based on where you're at, you know, it may very well be trying to help you. So align, and right now it is trying the North Node. I'm going to stick with my metaphor. You're going somewhere. You know what is on your plate moving forward. The universe has made it clear. Do not be in denial. Pack your bags accordingly. Okay? Um, I'm going to leave it at that. Subscribe to my channel. Click on the uh, bell icon next to the subscribe button to know when I do videos. Uh, and be notified accordingly. Like, comment, share, get the word out, blah, blah, blah. I will be back in touch soon, probably for the new moon in Capricorn video, which I'm excited to talk about. Um, and I do my new moon videos after the new moon shortly. I know, eccentric. Um, I'll be in touch soon enough. Thanks for your patience. Bye.